What if I told you there was a way you could actually pull off a relaxing vacation inside the Disney World bubble, all thanks to a classic hotel? Is a high-priced room really worth all that extra R&R, or are you better off being in the center of all the theme park action? Find out today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're hitting up the oldest Disney Vacation Club hotel on Disney World property, aka Disney's Old Key West Resort. Disney's OKW is a deluxe resort, meaning you're gonna get some of the best Disney hotel amenities, but at the highest price points. And unlike some of the other deluxe resorts on property, Old Key West also doubles as a Disney Vacation Club resort. But let's be honest, they're all sort of on their way to doubling as Disney Vacation Club resorts, right? So those who are part of the Disney Vacation Club membership, which is essentially a Disney-based timeshare program, can choose OKW to be their home resort, or the resort DVC members can choose to pay real estate interest for. Don't worry, I'm not focusing on the DVC stuff today, but you can learn more about it on our DVC video, The Truth About Disney's Biggest Moneymaker, after this, if you're interested. All you need to know now is that despite the Disney Vacation Club Resort title, anybody is allowed to book rooms here, whether you own the real estate or not. And now it's time to grab a coconut drink, turn on your steel drum tunes, and button up your floral print shirt, because things are about to get super tropical. So Disney's Old Key West is a strong contender for winning the most laid back resort on property award. Disney doesn't have an awards show for its resorts or anything, but if they did, then I've already got the superlative categories all laid out for them. So Old Key West has an easygoing summery feel to it with color schemes that incorporate lots of pastels and rustic decor to embody that antiquity of the Florida Keys. This place is pretty quiet and slow going with the hustle and bustle meter cranked all the way down and island tunes cranked all the way up. The resort grounds are extremely spread out and surround the Lake Buena Vista golf course, but the main section of the hotel sits right on the waterway that brings boats to and from the Disney Springs shopping district. Now, I'd be a liar if I call that Old Key West as being the only beach-themed resort in Disney World. Disney actually has a lot of hotels with themes revolving around beaches and sun and tropical seclusion. So how does Old Key West compare? Well, Disney's Beach Club Resort probably compares closest to Old Key West, though its theming relies more on a New England seaside setting than a Florida-based one. Beach Club is also right there in the Epcot area, meaning you're only steps away from two out of the four theme parks, giving Beach Club a less private feel and more of an in-the-midst-of-all-the-action-at-all-times feel. Polynesian Village Resort, on the other hand, celebrates the tropical vibes of the South Pacific, while Old Key West doesn't really have a specific Disney character it focuses its resort around. You're going to see a lot of character influences at Polynesian Village coming from fan-favorite films like Lilo and Stitch and Moana. And then there's Disney's Caribbean Beach Resort, which is themed around, well, the Caribbean. So expect lots of Calypso tunes, vibrantly colored buildings, and marketplace-inspired food courts. So although we've got a lot of beach essences going on amidst the Disney resorts, each of them still has a distinct personality, including Disney's Old Key West, which feels more like a tropical getaway in a nearby coastal town. So it doesn't matter how secluded you might feel from the Disney World parks, when you're staying at Old Key West, you're still on Disney World property, and that means you're still expected to pay Disney World hotel prices. At Old Key West, there's a variety of room options you could pay for, spanning between the deluxe studios and the villas of different sizes, and I'm going to quickly go through each of the options to give you a better idea of what your stay in the Florida Keys could look like in terms of your budget. Regardless of the room you choose, the view options outside your window are going to be the same. You might have views of the water, the woods, or Lake Buena Vista Golf Course fairways. Each of the accommodations will also either have a balcony or patio space, giving you a nice little private outdoor area to enjoy each morning. The most basic room option at Old Key West is the Deluxe Studio. These rooms sleep up to four people, with only one main room that also includes a small table with chairs. There's also only one bathroom here, but there are two sinks, one in the bathroom and one right outside it, because nothing quite screams deluxe like those double sink privileges. Other amenities you can expect in the Deluxe Studio are a toaster, a microwave, a mini fridge with a little kitchenette area, and what should you expect to pay? Around $500 to $650 per night. And before you ask, yes, this is the cheapest option at the resort, so look out. If you're in the category of, hey, family, nothing personal, but I'm not so interested in sharing a room that only has two queen beds with you, then you might be more interested in one of the old Key West villas. The villas offer amenities that aim to make you feel right at home, like a washer and dryer for any laundry needs, and a full kitchen with a stove, microwave, toaster, and full-size refrigerator. 
If you've got a smaller group, you can opt for the one bedroom villas, which include one king bed and a queen size sleeper sofa and a sleeper chair. If someone in your group isn't particularly interested in sleeping in a chair, which fair enough, I wouldn't be either, then this type of villa will only sleep four people, although the Disney website will state you can technically sleep five. For a one bedroom villa, you can expect to pay $650 to $800 a night. Now, if you compare that price against the deluxe studio price, you're paying an additional $150 to $300 per night for one more guest who's gonna have to sleep in a chair. So it may not seem quite as worth the extra investment for a little extra space, but then again, there's the addition of that full kitchen and that separate bedroom area and the washer dryer may be more worthy sounding. So there are definitely things to consider. Now, if you have an even bigger group, the two bedroom villas might be more fitting for you, both literally and figuratively. These villas include one king bed, two queens, one queen sleeper sofa, and that twin sleeper chair. So again, although Disney states you can sleep up to nine in these villas, you might only really be able to sleep up to eight adults comfortably when you consider that sleeper chair is one of the listed bed options. Now, by the way, for those who haven't seen one of these sleeper chairs, they basically pull out into a twin bed. So it's kind of like a pull out sofa, but it's a chair. So one of the best things about these two bedroom villas, they've also got two full bathrooms. So one person could take a shower while another person, you know, takes care of business. The two bedroom villas go for around 950 to 1300 per night. So a tad bit pricier than the one bedroom villas at say Saratoga Springs. And now for the biggest old Key West villa option of them all, there are the three bedroom grand villas and these can sleep up to 11 to 12 people. This villa is split over two stories with sleeping arrangements that include one king bed, two queens, two doubles, one queen sleeper sofa, and that sleeper chair. The three bedroom villa also has four bathrooms, which will definitely come in handy. The living room area is definitely spacious, but probably doesn't have enough room for all 12 people to sit around and shoot the breeze comfortably. However, the kitchen table area is also an offshoot of the living room, and there's lots of extra seating in there to play a board game in the evening or enjoy a meal in your home away from home. You can expect to pay between $1,900 and $2,400 per night for one of these villas, so make sure you've got other family members in your posse ready to help pitch in with the price tag so you don't have to worry about one person having to pay for everything all by themselves. Now, the prices we're talking about here are by no means pocket change. I mean, think about it. A three-bedroom villa for a seven-night vacation is going to wind up costing you around $13,000 to $16,000 when all is said and done, and that's, wow, like horribly high. Like, you can get a pretty nice car. But there are a couple of ways you can knock down those outrageously high resort price tags. For starters, always check Disney World's special offers, deals, and discounts page on their website to see if any limited time savings opportunities have popped up for your upcoming resort stay. And if you don't mind not paying for your Disney hotel directly through Disney's website, you can always try to get a Disney Vacation Club rental through a reliable third-party site like David's DVC Rentals instead. These rental sites act as the bridge between Disney Vacation Club owners who are looking to rent out their unused vacation points from their timeshare and non-DVC owners who are looking to save hundreds on their next big Disney Deluxe Resort stay. To learn more about these types of DVC rental sites, check out our Disney World Hotel Secret that could save you hundreds video right after this. Okay, so money talk is stressful, so let's get back to the non-stressful parts of this video, i.e. what you're actually going to get at the hotel. Compared to the rest of the Disney Vacation Club resorts like the Boardwalk Villas or Beach Club Villas or Grand Floridian Villas, the studios at Old Key West are the largest by approximately 25 square feet. I know it's hard to actually visualize what 25 square feet of extra space looks like, so just think of it this way. It's extra space for you to avoid tripping over your luggage, for your kids to not be up in each other's business, and for additional storage for all of those souvenirs that you're planning on buying while on property. Okay, extra space is great and all, but what about the theming? Does that tropical, dreamy, southern Florida style carry over from the old Key West grounds and into the rooms themselves? Yeah. The rooms naturally follow a beachy theme with a lot of neutral hues, setting the stage for bright pops of color and decorative seaside accents. Expect lots of blues and tans to represent the ocean and sandy shores, and different sea decor like framed beach scenes and artsy coral designs. All in all, the secluded and low-key feel of Old Key West makes it a nice environment for adults to unwind and actually feel like they're on vacation. But the lack of in-your-face Disney characters could be a downer for the kids who may find themselves wishing for a Moana-themed room or an under-the-sea suite with Nemo and Dory. So is too much isolation a bad thing? Well, Old Key West feels kind of like you're stranded on an island, minus the stranding. And that's because this resort is located away from all the theme park action. It sits in the Disney Springs area, similar to Saratoga Springs and the Port Orleans Riverside and French Quarter resorts. 
Like I mentioned earlier, Old Key West is super spread out, which definitely has its pros and cons. If you're looking for a quiet getaway where you're not on top of other guests at all times, then you'll probably be a fan of this more spacious setup. But if you were wanting to be close to everything and not have to stress over a whole lot of extra travel time, then Old Key West can go from being a place of no worries to a place that suddenly has a lot of them. This is where my love-hate relationship with the Disney buses comes into play. Yep, the Disney buses are free for resort guests to use, and yes, they'll get you to where you need to go eventually, but the buses are definitely the slowest method Disney uses to get guests to and from the parks and hotels. But unless you're planning on driving yourself from place to place or paying for a rideshare service to come and pick you up, the Disney buses are your only transportation option to the parks at Old Key West Resort. Not to mention, the buses at this DVC resort are particularly slow since this resort has five different bus stops throughout the grounds. Now granted, five bus stops means you never have to worry about walking 500 miles to reach any particular one of them, no matter where your room at the resort might be. However, since each bus does have to pick up guests at every single one of these stops, your overall journey could end up being significantly longer than you planned. And that can be a major bummer when you're potentially shelling out an $800 plus per night for a stay here, especially when you consider that many of the other Disney resorts, like those around the monorail loop along the Skyliner route or in the Epcot area, have the advantage of park proximity and could cost you the same amount to stay at, but put you within walking distance of parks. Then again, you can take some much needed refuge from the buses when you travel over to Disney Springs. Just hop on a boat from the old Key West dock located in front of the hospitality house and make a leisurely journey over to the shopping district. After a 15 minute boat ride, boom, you'll have so many more dining, shopping and entertainment options to choose from to expand on what you already have at Old Key West. And I hate to keep being the devil's advocate here, but once again, these Disney Springs boats still may not be the most convenient travel option for you, depending on where your room is at the resort. If you're in one of the buildings that's close to the hospitality house, like buildings 11 to 14, you can walk over to the boats and other nearby resort offerings pretty easily. But for many of the other buildings, getting to the hospitality house means crossing roads or walking an extra 20 to 30 minutes, or maybe even having to take a bus just to get over to that main lobby area. So yeah. Spread out hotels can be nice, but when it comes to travel convenience, you may be better off with one of Disney's more compact hotels like Port Orleans French Quarter or Contemporary. So all this travel is making us hungry. What's on the menu, Old Key West? Dining options at Disney's Old Key West pull from those good Florida Keys influences, so expect lots of seafood and key lime flavors and good old home cooking. Olivia's Cafe is the main hidden gem here. Lots of guests aren't going to travel off the beaten path to come here, but those that do could be in for a treat. The atmosphere of Olivia's is super welcoming and casual and has a small town vibe. I mean, just take a look at all those pictures on the wall of past and current DVC members. Makes the whole setting feel very familial. Olivia serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but what it's really known for is brunch offerings. Some standout items we've had in the past have been the banana bread French toast, southernmost buttermilk chicken, conch chowder, and key lime tart for desserts, one of my favorites. For a quicker food selection, Goods Food to Go is the resort's main quick service location, which is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner as well. Goods has several grab-and-go options like breakfast sandwiches and cheeseburgers, salads, sandwiches, drinks, you get it. Stuff you'll find practically anywhere. Goods is very close to the main marina area, making it a super convenient pit stop before you take off across the water to do some bass fishing, which is just one of the many recreational activities at this hotel that we'll go over in a bit. Also, when it's in season, do not miss out on the Key Lime Pie Dole Whip here. Especially if you're trying to be a Dole Whip flavors completionist, it might be against your nature not to at least try. Tucked between Olivia's Cafe and Goods Food to Go, you'll find the Gurgling Suitcase. This is a bar that offers select goodies right from Olivia's menu and plenty of drinks and specialty cocktails. This is a quicker and easier way to get some food from Olivia's without worrying about the advanced dining reservations, though honestly, Olivia's usually isn't too terribly difficult to get a last minute reservation for in the first place. Some of the specialty drinks at Gurgling Suitcase you might want to try include the Key West Loaded Bloody Mary, the Vodka and Melon Liqueur Based Key West Freeze, and the Rum Heavy Turtle Crawl, which is really the most famous drink here, and it's got tropical fruity flavors. And last but not least, we've got the Turtle Shack Poolside Snacks, which is a poolside bar way far away from the other three food and drink options at the hotel. Instead of being close to the hospitality house, Turtle Shack is closer to the old Turtle Pond Leisure Pool by the buildings that are off old Turtle Pond Road. This place has got to be turtly enough for the Turtle Club, y'all, if you know, you know. Now, some poolside bites that you can find here are pizza, nachos, salad, and other essential Disney snacks like the Mickey Premium Ice Cream Bars. 
It also has some refreshing poolside drinks too, like strawberry daiquiris and pina coladas. Compared to other deluxe level resorts, Old Key West seems to be a little bit lacking in the food department, but Olivia's Cafe is definitely the star student here that we might actually find ourselves making an extra trek out to experience, even when we're not staying at this resort. So two things to note though, when you think about Old Key West not having as many food options. First of all, this is an entirely Disney Vacation Club resort, which means most of the locations here have a full kitchen and the rest have a kitchenette. So they're kind of expecting you to make food in your room a lot of the time. And also remember that you've got several other dining options over at Disney Springs, and that's just a boat ride away. Okay, ready for a fun-filled day at the beach? Sorry, don't wanna get your hopes up too much. You're not actually gonna be at a real live Florida Key or anything here, but Disney definitely takes advantage of Old Key West's massive resort grounds and offers tons of different outdoor activities. Across the hotel, there are four pools. The Sandcastle Pool, located near the Hospitality House, that's the resort's feature pool. It includes a 125-foot-long water slide jutting out of a huge sandcastle with a not-so-hidden Mickey, and a kids' pool, hot tub, sauna, and sandy playground, perfect for burying your feet into. The second biggest pool on site is one I was talking about earlier, the place where you'll find the Turtle Shack poolside snacks. No major additions to this pool, but there is a cute playground for the kids if they get tired of splishing and splashing around. And then there are the two leisure pools, which depending on where your room is, may be closer and more convenient to where you're actually staying on site. But if you're not close to either of these, no need to make the extra trek over to see them if you don't want to. They're your basic hotel swimming pool, nothing more. If the weather outside is bad, then the kids can hang out at one of the two Old Key West arcades like Flying Fish Arcade or Electric Eel Arcade. Want to embrace your sporty side? You can rent volleyball, tennis, and basketball equipment for a good family-friendly competition. The bike and Surrey bike rentals definitely serve a double purpose. They're fun, but also a very helpful way of getting around this massive resort. And if you're still looking for more of an indoor escape, Kong Flats Community Hall is the spot to nab any and all equipment you might need for ping pong or shuffleboard, foosball, and billiards. You're not quite gonna work up a sweat playing pool though, at least not usually. So the old Key West exercise room can help you get in your daily workout with its cardio equipment, free weights, and weight machines. There's also a jogging trail around the resort if you feel so inclined to run before a full park day. And in true Florida fashion, you can go on a fishing excursion from the marina to try to score some catch and release bass. That is an extra cost though. And much like we've already talked about, one of the big recreational selling points of this hotel is being so incredibly close to the Lake Buena Vista Golf Course. This 18-hole course offers private lessons or you can just book some regular tea time to blow off some steam. Enjoy the surrounding peace and quiet, and hopefully not get stuck in too many of those bunkers. At night, after a full day's worth of activities, you can watch a movie under the stars or gather around the crackling campfire for some free marshmallow roasting. Now, although Old Key West is definitely missing some of its deluxe perks, like having way more dining options or being within walking distance to at least one of the Disney parks, it still has a major deluxe perk that you're gonna wanna take advantage of, and that's the extended evening hours benefit. Extended evening hours are available for deluxe resort guests only. This specialty perk allows you to stay in select parks on certain nights for up to two hours after the park closes for everyone else, meaning you can access some of the most popular rides with little to no wait time. Before you book your deluxe resort stay, check out the Disney World Park calendar to see when extended evening hours are happening during your trip. When they're offered, these usually happen for Magic Kingdom on Tuesdays or Wednesdays, Epcot on Mondays, and Disney's Hollywood Studios on Thursdays. Along with the extended evening hours benefit, you'll also receive the resort perk available for all guests staying at any Disney-owned hotel, and that's the early theme park entry benefit. This is available every day at every park and allows you to enter the parks 30 minutes before they open to all other non-resort guests, meaning you get a head start on your priority rides. Maybe even get a couple of them out of the way before rope drop even happens. So is it worth it? Well, Old Key West has proven itself to be a worthy deluxe resort contender, but do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? You're gonna wanna stay at Old Key West if you want a clean cut from the parks at the end of the day. If there's one thing I can say about Old Key West studios and villas, they are peaceful, they're serene, they're quiet. What other soothing adjectives can I use to drive that point home? So if you're taking a Disney vacation, but you'd really like to not do the parks on some days and just enjoy the place you're staying, Old Key West will give you that R&R feel that you desperately desire, all within a beach-like setting. Now, you might wanna stay here too if you're traveling with a big group. Old Key West's rooms are some of the most spacious studios and villas you're gonna find amongst all the Disney World resorts. Basically, 
This was Disney's prototype for a Disney Vacation Club resort, and then they realized they could charge the same amount of money for a lot less room, and that's what they did in every other hotel. So Old Key West is the only one that has this size room. And these could be the perfect fit if you're planning on coming here for a big family reunion. These rooms will give everyone enough space to spread out without feeling like you're constantly on top of each other all the time. And you might want to stay here if you want a resort with lots of different recreational offerings. Whether you want to play around a round of golf, take a bike ride, dig your toes in the sand, slide down a massive water slide, play some billiards, ride a boat, you get it. You're not going to be bored at Old Key West. Though this resort isn't too character driven, which could be disappointing for the kids who are trying to scout out Mickey Mouse around every corner, the kids are still going to find plenty to do here and so will the teens and tweens and adults. Now, Old Key West might not be for you if you want a resort with more travel convenience. When you're staying at a hotel that has a full 18-hole golf course weaving its way throughout it, you know you're staying somewhere huge. Depending on where your room is, it can be difficult to get around from your villa and over to the resort's full array of amenities at its hospitality house, and isn't that a big part of what you're paying for too, amenities? Just saying. The expansiveness also means traveling to and from the parks can be a bigger undertaking than the resorts that place you within walking distance of them, which may be more worth your money if you plan on making the parks a big part of your Disney World vacation. You also might not want to stay here if you don't want to shell out thousands of dollars per night. I get it, trying to fathom paying for a hotel that could very well cover many folks' monthly rent payment is a hard pill to swallow. There are ways to cut down on those studio and villa costs. In fact, this is one of the hotels that gets the deepest discounts, but that doesn't mean they're ever gonna be dirt cheap. If you want a much cheaper stay that still holds a lot of people in one centralized location, you might wanna check out some of the highly rated VRBOs and Airbnbs in the area. Though these rentals won't give you any Disney World specific perks like extra hours or complimentary transportation or free theme park parking, they can end up costing you hundreds less per night to stay in. Just make sure you do your research and find out if this route is a better option for you and your group, and don't forget to check all those reviews. Now, you also might not want to stay here if you want a hotel with more dining options. Olivia's is great, but you're probably not going to want to eat there every single day. Now, you can take that boat ride to Disney Springs for tons of other nearby dining options, but if you're not super close to the hospitality house, then getting to Disney Springs can still end up being a time commitment. Instead, you might want to choose a deluxe resort that has lots of different food options so you can have variety to choose from each day of your visit. For example, resorts located in the Epcot area not only have three different hotels, each with their own food options, that you can easily get to while strolling around the entire stretch of the boardwalk, but they also have the Skyliner at their disposal so you can access even more hotels and more food options. Not to mention they've got two parks within walking distance that you can slip into for even more dining opportunities. But Old Key West doesn't have this advantage, and depending on where your room is, you might not even have the advantage of being anywhere remotely close to the restaurant of your actual hotel, period. So overall, Old Key West has a lot of great amenities and a charming beachy atmosphere that unquestionably feels like a Florida vacation. But depending on your group and your personal preferences, the combined price tag, lack of dining options, and travel inconveniences of this hotel, it could make it a hard pass for you. But let me get your thoughts about it. Is Old Key West a family favorite of yours? Is this your Disney Vacation Club home resort? Or is there another hotel that's become like an old reliable friend for you? Let me know in the comments, and as always, keep checking back here for even more Disney World Resort reviews, as well as the latest vacation updates. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.